This video will alter the way you look at investing. After this, you will know where to invest and why to invest where you're investing. That's my promise. Hi everyone, this is Anupam Rungta and welcome to today's video. Now, you must have heard this word compounding. Where is it coming from? It is simply coming from the word compound interest. Now, we learned in our fifth grade mathematics, if I remember it correctly, the difference between simple interest and compound interest, right? So simple interest is, for example, you get 10% interest as simple interest on an investment of 1 lakh rupees and you invest for next 10 years. For every year, you will get 10% of 1 lakh, that is 10,000 rupees will keep on getting added every year. Right, 10,000 plus 10,000 plus 10,000. In case of compounding, in first year you make 10,000 rupees, 10% 10 returns, so your amount becomes 1 lakh 10,000. After that, next year you get another 10% 10 returns. Now, this 10% 10 returns is on 1 lakh 10,000 rupees. So, the amount is bigger than 1 lakh 20,000 rupees. Right, so that's what is compounding. Now, it might look like a very small difference between simple interest and compound interest. But it is the time which shows you the huge gap between when you come when you grow something by simple interest and when you grow something by compounding. Right now, keeping uh, keeping aside this mathematics part, there is one statement, very interesting statement by Albert Einstein. He says, "Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand earn it; those who do not pay it." So let's understand compounding today so that you are amongst the one who earn it and not end up paying it. Right. Now to explain you further, let me start, let me show you something on the screen and one by one I'll ask you questions and just keep thinking about the answers to the questions I'm asking you. Now before understanding compounding in detail, let's start with the concept of inflation. Now we all understand what inflation is. Let's say the inflation of the country is 5% and uh, you are saving 100 rupees today, which means next year your investment should grow at least by 5% so that you have 105 rupees in your hand and you can purchase that same item which was worth 100 rupees last year and today it is 105 rupees. In fact, one thing which we miss out is you should earn little more than 5% returns because after paying the desired taxes, whatever the tax is on that investment, you should have 105 rupees in your hand. So the 5% return should be after, it should be net of taxes, right? Now, as per Government of India data, if you look at last 40 years of inflation data, the inflation in India is around 7 to 7.5% 7 compounded annually. It is very low right now, I know it was very low in a, in a, for a very long time, but it was very high also in 80s, 90s and a lot of, lot of uh, phases, right? So average inflation in India has been between 7 to 7.5%, but the inflation witnessed or suffered by you and me is much more than that because of something called lifestyle inflation. Now, before I delve deeper into lifestyle inflation, tell me in the chat box, uh, tell me in the comment box, what was the expense of your household in 1982, 40 years back? Now, why am I talking about 40 years data for inflation and 40 years data here? Because 40 years is like lifetime of one generation. You start working at 2025, you work till 60, 65, and you build your wealth over this period. Now, in this period, you, 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 you go through different levels of inflation, different levels of returns in your investments, and you build your wealth over this period. On an average, you know how much returns you have earned on every asset class. Instead of 40 years, if I take only 5 years, 10 years, or 20 years, I might get biased towards a particular type of investment. Right? Let's say property maybe has not done well for last 10 years, but if you look at last 40 years, it has done well. Right? Equity has done well for last 2 years, even last 5 years has, has been good because of that. But it's more important to look at a longer period of time so that we are unbiased as much as possible. Right? 40 years will, be, will take out all the biasness possible. So, in 1982, 20, uh, 40 years back, what was the expense of your household assuming there were 4 family members? Now, Typically, it was a, we used to have like joint family and larger families in, in the 80s and 70s and 80s. So let's say you had six, seven, eight family members or more, reduce it proportionately and then tell me in the comment box what was your expense, your family's expense in 1982. Please mind, I'm saying 82, not 92. 
right so the one way to find out is simply see, please ask your parents or your grandparents right uh, other way is you might remember some conversation having with them when they said that this is the kind of salary we used to have in 70s and 80s and at that time the saving rate in india in india was more than 40 percent so if someone was earning 500 rupees per month as salary they were saving 40 percent of the out of that and remaining was getting uh, going into uh, general household expenses so keeping these couple of things in mind write down in the comment box and then come back to the video i hope you have written your answer now typically when i have done you know i've, I've done numerous sessions on this and i've asked this question to like thousands of people now the answer I've got is anywhere between 200 rupees to 1000 rupees per month for a family of four. This was the expense in India for a, for a, for a family of four. Monthly expenses were anywhere between rupees 200 to rupees 1000. Right? Now, fast forward to 2022. Again, family of four. Now, again, write in the comment box, what are your expenses today? Now, before you write that answer, let me give you some examples of what you should look at when you look, look uh, counting your, uh, uh, calculating your expenses. Number one, you should look at the monthly expense, which is like grocery expenses or maybe rent or maybe some EMI or whatever it is, your, uh, you know, uh, your fuel expenses, all that should come into this. But there are some expenses which are not monthly, which are like quarterly or maybe half yearly. Let's say your schools, uh, your children's school fees. Right. So think about those expenses also, which are which are quarterly or half, uh, half yearly. Next, there are some expenses which are once in a year. Let's say paying your income tax. Yes, even that is an expense, right? You only pay that. So that's an expense that is going out of your pocket. Yeah, whether it is some charges or, exp or income tax or maybe some household expenses, it is all going money going out from your pocket. Right. So calculate that. And then there are some expenses which are occasional. Let's say some shopping. You bought some new mobile phone, some new gadget some new appliances for the kitchen, some new furniture, some new some, uh, some vacations, right? So all add all of this which you spend in a year and then divide by 12 to come at the right answer. What are your expenses for per month basis? Don't just add your grocery expense and say my expenses so and so, right? And this is for a family of four for apple to apple comparison. If you are single, your expenses will be definitely very low. If you are just married and you don't have children, your expenses will be very low. If you have one child, your expenses will be lower than someone who has two children, right? So for two children, both are school going, their school fees, all your expenses, monthly expenses, calculate it and write again in the chat box, in the comment box, what is your expense today in 2022 for a family of four on a monthly basis? Now, again, when I've asked this question to, you know, uh, thousands of people, the typical answer I've got ranges anywhere between 50,000 rupees up to 2 lakhs. It is, you know, mostly above 1 lakh to between 1 to 2 lakhs, but there are certain people between 50 to 1,000, 1 lakh as well, right? For again, for a family of four, I'm saying, I'm repeating this again and again, right? Now, let's assume it was 1,000 rupees in 19, uh, 1982 on the higher side, right? And today it is... 50,000 rupees on the very low side for a family of four. Fair enough. You have taken the higher side expense in 1982. You must be living a lavish life in 1982, spending 1000 rupees per month for a family of four. Right. And today you are, let's say, economic and you are, you know, uh, managing your expenses very well. And you are spending 50,000 rupees and having a decent lifestyle enough for a, for a family of four in whatever city you are staying into. Yeah. So from 1000 rupees to 50,000 rupees in 40 years is 50 times in 40 years. Now, when something grows by 50 times in 40 years, the inflation or the rate of growth is more than 10% compounded annually. Let me show you some calculation. If something, uh, if your expenses were 1000 rupees per month and your expense has grown by 10% per annum for 40 years, it becomes 45,000 rupees per month today. And we are, we are talking about what? Minimum 50,000. So your inflation of last 40 years is at least 10% per annum, right? Now, there are some people who might say that my, my uh, expenses today are almost 1 lakh rupees. In that case, your inflation has been 12%. You have witnessed or suffered inflation of 12% in last 40 years, right? And there are some people who might be spending almost 2 lakh rupees today per month. For them, the inflation from 1000 rupees to 2 lakh rupees in last 40 years is 14% compounded annually. Now, why is it more than the government inflation? This is what I call lifestyle inflation. Look at the number of 
मोबाइल फोन्स यू हैव इन योर हाउस नाउ इट केम एज अ लग्जरी नाउ इट्स अ नेसेसिटी एंड एवरी फैमिली मेंबर हैज गॉट इट लुक एट द नंबर ऑफ टेलीविजन यू हैव इन योर होम वी यूज टू हैव वन टी वी एंड इन होम राइट टिपिकली इवन टूडे सम माई पीपल माइट हैव इट बट देर आर लॉर ऑफ हाउस होल्ड वेर एवरी रूम हैज गॉट वन टी वी आई रिमेंबर वन एयर कंडीशन कंडीशन केम टू अवर हाउस इट वॉज इट वॉज अ ह्यूज इवेंट वी हैव गॉट ए सी एट होम टूडे एवरी रूम हैज गॉट ए सी इंक्लूडिंग द डाइनिंग रूम एंड लिविंग रूम right look at the number of cars equal to number of adults in the family look at the number of uh, clothes you have in your wardrobe and the number of clothes your grandfather had or your father have right look at the number of footwears you have these small small things but this is what i am talking about lifestyle inflation look at the number of times you eat out i remember in 90s going out for dinner used to be an event aaj mummy papa bahar khane pe leke ja rahe hain dinner pe leke ja rahe hain hum bahar ja rahe hain hotel mein khana khane ja rahe hain right today you order like at least 5 times a week whether you go out or you order from swiggy or zomato whatever you you number of times you eat out or you order is maybe five times or maybe much more right this is called lifestyle inflation that's why your inflation is much more than what the government that standard data is talking about right so now this is the kind of inflation you have witnessed now we just saw this simple example that if you are if inflation is 5% you your money must grow by that much amount so that you at least are at par so that your living standard is at least maintained at that level right so minimum in the worst case scenario you sh- your investment should have given you 10% returns after paying taxes so typically your returns should have been around 12% in last 40 years on your entire assets on an average so that after paying the desired taxes you would have earned at least 10% returns on your assets on an average to remain at par with inflation not even beat inflation right maybe some bells are ringing now you know where the problem is why why people have not built wealth why only minority have built wealth right now to explain this further let's take an example through a, a, a table and excel sheet which i have created it's called magic of compounding we have taken an example where let's say 5000 rupees per month someone is investing for 40 years you invest the same amount now this is an assumption which is not practically true you will not invest the same amount for 40 years it's a very long period right but for the sake of calculation let's assume it is the same amount so 60000 rupees per year at the rate of 5000 per month into 40 years makes it 224 lakh rupees invested over 40 years mind it this 24 lakhs is not invested on day 1 this 24 lakhs is invested over a period of 40 years on a monthly basis slowly and gradually right now if you look at the returns uh, let's assume saving banks you're getting 4% i know you don't get that now but let's say in a debt some debt mutual fund scheme you're getting that in insurance gold fd bond ppf and rd returns are between 7 to 9% yes gold also has given returns between 7 to 9% compounded annually in last 40 years you can check the data yeah and this is an inr if you look in dollar terms the returns in gold is around 2% compounded annually we have earned more return in inr because inr depreciated in last 40 years So the INR has to depreciate in the same way for next forty years to for the gold to give same seven eight percent returns, assuming everything else is constant. Household inflation we have taken at twelve percent. Why? Because only when you earn twelve percent after paying taxes you you are at bare minimum ten percent rate of return you get, right? Which is your bare minimum inflation any household has witnessed in last forty years, right? And between twelve to twenty percent returns is what we have seen giving uh, getting returns in property and equity market, right? Now, number of years we take from five years up to forty years. We don't invest in equity market and or real estate or stock market or, or mutual funds for less than five years. That's why we are not taking any example of less than five years. Now, if you invest rupees five thousand per month at the rate of four percent per annum, that's the return is four percent per annum. After forty years, your twenty four lakhs of investment will become worth fifty eight lakhs. Yeah, simple. It's a simple mathematics. You can always cross check that calculation at your end. If you are making seven percent returns, your uh, final amount will be one point two four CR, one point two four crores. In case of nine percent, it will be two point two one, two point one two crores. But actually, what you needed was four point eight nine crores. Now think about it. Any couple, a retired couple, and let's say at the age of sixty, if they have got around five CR as worth of assets with them, don't you think their retirement life is sorted? They are financially free. Yeah, why? Because they have beaten the inflation, or they have been at the par with inflation. That was enough. But you don't see majority of people having five crores with them today at their retirement. Why? This proves that on an average, the kind of investments they they've made, they have given much less returns than even twelve percent. 
in the last 40 years. Yeah. And if you look at the look at the last next four figures, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 20%, the kind of numbers you get is 11.52 CR, 15 CR, 27 CR, and 48 CR. This is just by investing 5,000 rupees per month. That's why it is called magic of compounding or power of compounding. It is not about how much you invest. It is not also about how, how much returns you're getting. We're not talking about 25, 30, 40, 50 percent kind of returns. We're talking about 15, 16, 18 percent kind of returns. It is not about amount of investment. It is not about return of investment. It is more about how much long you stay invested for. Yeah. Now, you must have seen a lot of people who are in their old age, 60 plus, 50 plus, 55 plus, 65 plus, 70 plus, and they're still working or they're dependent on their children. Why? Because they're in, not that they didn't earn enough. They earned enough. They saved very well, especially our previous generation for sure. But the kind of investments they made never have that they have never beaten inflation. And that's why they are falling on the left hand side of the table that is below 12 percent returns. And that's why they are still working or they are financially dependent. Right. All those who made more than 12 percent, they are having assets today. They are having wealth today. Yeah. Now look around you. How many people do you know who have invested in FD or insurance and gold and they have wealth today? There will be none. But you must have heard people saying that this person has got properties worth 10 crores, 20 crores, 50 crores, 100 crores, or this person has got stocks worth 100 crores or 200 crores. Because assets can be built or inflation can be beaten only in two asset classes. One is real estate and second is equity market. The only difference in real estate and equity market is you can't invest 5,000 rupees per month in real estate. Yeah, in last 40 years, that was not possible. Even today, 5,000 rupees is not possible per month. Yeah. So and, and it is not liquid as as the stock market is. So that's the difference. But yes, it, it has given return. Both the assets have given returns in terms of beating the inflation. And in property, typically the agricultural land or the plotted uh, projects have given the given the returns, not constructed premises. So think about it. This what do you see that's uh, insurance and gold and FD, PPF and RD. Is it really guarantee or a guaranteed loss? Think about it. It feels safe. It feels good. But it is not safe for the long term because it will not beat inflation. Yeah. So th please think about it. The same table, instead of 5,000 rupees, 20,000 rupees per month. Look at the last four figures 46 crores, 61 crores, 109 crores, and 194 crores. Now, when I show this table to the participants and to the, to the audience I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, sharing the uh, slides with, the tip, a couple of people, you know, they, they, they counter, uh, made a counter argument and they said this looks quite irrational. It's like, uh, it's not, we don't need this kind of money. This is good for the presentation, but you don't need this 40, 60, 100 crores kind of money at 40 years on the line. This is too big. Now, you just calculated your per month expenses around 1 lakh rupees per month. For some people, it's much more than that. For most of the people I found is between 1 lakh to 2 lakh, right? Let's say it is 1 lakh. 50,000 to 2 lakh is the range. Let's say 1 lakh is your expense per month on an average, right? This is 100 times of what it was 40 years back. What is 100 times of 1 lakh? 1 crore per month, not per annum, right? Now you might say the inflation in the next 40 years would not be that much. Fine, point taken. Instead of 100 times, let's say it will be 50 times, 25 times. Fair enough, right? Instead of 100 times, we're making it only 25 times. Right? That's 25 lakhs per month. Even that sounds absurd, right? 25 lakhs per month is 3 crore rupees per annum. The point is, that's why it is called magic of compounding. 40 years back, if someone told your grandfather that your family will spend 1 lakh rupees per month, 40 years on the line, he would have reacted the same way. In 1982, in 1 lakh rupees, you would have got acres of land in the outskirts of your town. You would have been like a, you know, a, 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 the rich guy of your city or town. Right. And today, one lakh per month is your monthly expense. It's, 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 it's a very common thing. Similarly, 40 years on the line, 25 lakhs will be a very common thing. 40 years is a very long time. Yeah. So it looks big. It is not. It actually is not. Yeah. So think about your early expense in 2062. Then you will notice that these, this kind of amount you need or your next generation needs to be financially free. Yeah. And uh, this is not big. Why? Because this is achievable. You don't need 30-40% kind of returns to achieve this. We just see that the numbers. Yeah. Next. I have done the same table, last ta last uh, example uh, of this table, 50,000 rupees per month. Yeah. Now you might say 50,000 rupees per month is not possible for most of the people. I agree. But you know, look at the way you make property investments. 50,000 rupees per month is 6 lakh rupees per annum. You will get some very small plot of land in the outskirts of your city. Yeah. You make, I mean, your family would have made much bigger investments in property. 
covering like three, four, five years of uh, of savings uh, of fifty thousand rupees per month. Yeah, so it is it is doable. It is it is doable. If not in your early career, in your in your you know, you know as soon as you uh, uh, gain some experience, I am sure this is doable. Uh, now, look at the last four figures again: fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, and twenty percent. One hundred and fifteen crores, one fifty three crores, two seventy three, and four eighty seven crores. Now, why have I not taken more than twenty percent returns? Uh, example: the simple reason. Look at this. Warren Buffett in last. 50 60 years has made a return of around 20 to 21 percent compounded annually to be where he is today. Top 10 richest people. So that's a good news for us. Stop chasing and stop running behind those 30, 40, 50, 100 percent kind of returns. It is not sustainable in the long run. Yes, in the bull market you will get that. Maybe somewhere here and there you will get that. But you cannot sustain that kind of return for that long. And the good news is you don't even need to. With 20, 21 percent returns, you are in the top 10 percent uh, richest people in the world. What, what more do you want? In fact, you need much less than that to achieve all your financial goals. If you can achieve 15 percent compounded annual returns on your total assets, on an average, it will, you will have the kind of money you will have. You will not know what to do with it. Just 15 percent. But the, but the challenge is average 15 percent on the entire assets. Assets. What we typically do is. 98 percent money is lying down in FD, PPF, RD, Sukanya, so some of these are gold here, and there's insurance policies. Two percent you put in the equity market, and you expect 40 percent returns from there. That's where the problem is. Instead of making 40 percent returns, you end up losing money because you you are chasing some something else, something which is not doable. Your average return should be 15 percent on the entire assets. That so your larger chunk of investment should go towards the equity market so that you can achieve this 15 percent returns at on an average. Yeah. So think about that direction instead of chasing higher returns. Now you might have uh, noticed one more thing: why uh, compounding typically works in the later years. If you look at the first five, ten, fifteen, even twenty years, you'll be like, we have not reached anywhere. I mean, you, some of you might be investing for last ten, fifteen, twenty years. You might be disappointed and disheartened looking at the kind of wealth you have created so far, right? But Soon after that, twenty fifth, thirty, thirty five years onwards. I mean, it might look very long for some people, but yeah, that's how the uh, compounding works. Look at the numbers; they they shoot up like anything. Just at thirty years, uh, at fifteen percent rate of return, it was twenty eight crore rupees. Just ten years on the line, it becomes one hundred and fifteen crore rupees. Just ten years. So that compounding, it you, know, you look at Warren Buffett's wealth. You calculate. There's a there's a, a number which which shows which proves that 99% of his wealth, what he owns today, was created after he turned 50. That graph shoots up like this. Why? Because compounding impact was seen or tangibly seen after after a few years has have passed. Yeah. So few years, uh, initial few years, you might feel discouraged, but don't be because it is working. The, the compounding is working, and it will show the results very soon. Now you might have seen a lot of people in, uh, still doing insurance. Look at the kind of insurance uh, done by your grandparents and your your parents, and which is kind of maturing very soon, or which matured a few years back. Tell me in the comments box what is the amount of insurance cover uh, the amount you got in the in the policies which matured recently, or which are supposed to mature very soon in next one or two years. It will be very small, or it will be not not significant enough to make you very happy. Now, not that they did something wrong. They, their all intention was good. Be it your parents or grandparents. Today, you're getting, let's say, one lakh, two lakh, four lakh, five lakh, whatever amount you're getting in insurance. You might buy a buy a bike or maybe a, a, a small size car. That's all, right? But when they did the insurance, it was a big amount. Yeah, they thought they are doing something which will be really beneficial for their child or their grandchild. What? Unfortunately, happened was insurance policies never beat inflation. So every year, your money was getting eroded. For 20 years, your money got eroded. The value of it got went down by every year, and that's why today the amount is very small compared to what it looked like a big amount 20 years back. So, what did compounding taught us? One lakh per month looked huge in 1982. Today, it is normal. Similarly, 25 lakhs per month looks huge today. It will look normal. In 2062. Yeah. Next, if your expenses are growing from one lakh rupees per month today to 25 lakh rupees per month in next 40 years, do the simple maths. This is an inflation of 8.4 percent, which means you need to make returns of not 8.4, 10 percent or more. Because after paying taxes, you should have 8.4 percent returns in your hand, so that you are at par with inflation, not even beating inflation. At least you are at level of inflation. So. I always tell my uh, investors and participants that debt is risky in the short term, 
in the long term sorry and equity is risky in the short term and we do exactly the opposite now debt is risky in the long term means what it's not risky in terms of losing money or you know losing your capital but it is risky because it is not beating inflation yeah it looks safe right now but you do long term investments in debt or you do safe investments insurance or ppf and sukanya samriddhi yojana but it is risky because it is it is eroding your wealth and equity is risky in the short term equity is meant for long term and we do exactly the opposite in both the cases and that's when the results are not there yeah next generating 12 to 14 15% annualized returns on average on the entire wealth is a challenge but if you beat beat that challenge or you know you cross that challenge it will lead to abundance yeah so the only option we have is either you beat inflation or the inflation beats you compounding works works both the ways actually either you go up compounding or you go down you erode your wealth in a compounded manner repeating the albert einstein quote compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world those who understand earn it those who don't pay it all the best for your investing journey